Late last year, the world gathered in Paris for an historic climate conference. Just down the road, a satellite conference brought together a congregation not often associated with progress on climate change, Evangelical Christians. Catherine Hayhoe spoke at that conference, and she's here to give us her read on faith in climate science. She is director of the Climate Science Center at Texas Tech University and an associate professor of political science, and we're delighted to welcome you all the way from way down there to way up here, which is home for you, after all. That's right. It's great to be home again. And you're from here. That's great. Well, why did you guys stage this sort of complimentary conference to the one that was going on in Paris? So. In Paris, we had world leaders and we had negotiators from 195 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. Everybody was there because we've realized that it costs too much to ignore climate change. We have to do something about it. What was amazing about this conference, though, was it wasn't just the leaders, the policy negotiators, and the scientists. This time, it was voices from every walk of life. One of the biggest sectors was the faith voice. It wasn't just the people you'd expect to be there, following up on the Pope's encyclical, for example, but it was evangelical leaders also. In fact, I was there with the World Evangelical Alliance, which represents 600 million Christians around the world. And this event that we're talking about here was put on by another Christian organization called Arasha. It means the rock in Portuguese. Okay. And it's about conservation, conserving nature. One of the things, the phrases, I guess, that came out of your conference was this notion that, quote, facts are not enough. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, as a scientist, I deal with facts every day. Mm -hmm. So I know what science can tell us. Science can tell us that climate is changing. Science can tell us that for the first time in the history of the planet, it's not a natural cycle, it's humans. And science can even tell us, and this is what I do myself, mm -hmm. If we warm by one or one and a half or two degrees, which is what the whole COP meeting was talking about, mm -hmm. if we warm by this much, here are the impacts on our food, our health, our water, our economy, our bank account. But science can't tell us what to do about it. That's not so much the decision that we make here as what we make here. And for many of us, what's in our hearts, our values, what we think is important in life comes from our faith. So that's why it's so important to connect all of these facts and data and information about climate change to what's important to us, what we value, what we love. Thus the notion that facts are not enough. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. The highlight of the Christian Response Conference for you was what? The highlight was meeting so many people who not only share my faith but share my concern about climate change. Hmm. I live in the heart of Texas where the majority of people would say this isn't a real problem. It's just a hoax. It's something those liberal tree huggers are making up to take away our civil liberties. Mm -hmm. These are the types of things I hear every day on Facebook, on Twitter, in written letters that I get in the mail. And so to be there with 195 countries, with everybody saying, this is serious, this is real, we need to do something. As a scientist and as someone who's worked in this field for years, almost decades, it just felt like, wow, we get it. We're doing something. Do you ever say to these people, look at I'm as conservative as you because I want to conserve the planet on which we live. I do. You Being do conservative is about conserving and somehow we have lost our way. Hmm. The Christianity Today online publication Gleanings had the following to say, quote, white evangelicals increasingly agree that global warming is a serious problem, according to the 2015 data from the Pew Research Center. But the percentage, 24% agreed in 2015, up from 17% in 2013, still trails most other religious groups. So the numbers, I guess, are going in the right direction. But why are they still so far behind the rest of the, never, never mind the general population, but even other religious groups? Yes. I should add, in fairness, that not just white evangelicals, but white Catholics are in the basement together. Hmm which is even more strange since the Pope has spoken out so strongly right. about the importance of caring about climate change. Say in the basement. Yeah, he's in the basement too. <laughs> right. Okay. Why so, would that be? It's because people that we trust are telling us it isn't real. So in the U.S., who are the leaders that the Christian and the conservative community look to? Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh, <clears throat> Fox News, political leaders. If you look at all of the Republicans, running for president this year, they uniformly deny the reality of climate change. And so when people who we trust, thought leaders in the community are telling us it's not real, we're all intellectual cognitive misers, even you and I. Uh, we rely on other people for opinions on things that we don't have the time to dig into ourselves. 
Climate change is complicated to dig into. There's a lot of questions. How do we know it's real? How do we know it's humans? Aren't those scientists you know, disagreeing about it? No, we agree, but if you don't hear that, how do you know? So we're being told a lot of information that just isn't true. You ever done Fox News or, or Russia's show? I've done Fox News one time. My motto is try everything once. <laughs> so you tried it once, and would you do it again? Um, I wouldn't do it again unless unless they were willing to have a dialogue. I was there, I realized, as a punching bag to be yelled at. They just beat you up the whole time. And what's the point? Well, the, I guess the point is you are getting, by going on that channel, you are getting access to people who uh, you're not necessarily going to have a chance to get at by peering on other programs like this one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you, you need to convert, I guess you need to convert those who are at the moment unconverted, right? So you got to go where they are? Well, you have, yeah, you have to reach the people mm -hmm. who don't agree because otherwise you're just preaching to the choir, exactly. as they say. Yeah. Yes. But an important aspect of what I try to tell people it is, is that it's not a conversion of belief because often science and climate change is painted as an alternate religion. Hmm. And if we already have a religion, which in the U.S., 80% of people already do have a religion they're happy with, they aren't looking for a new religion. So presenting this as if it's a belief immediately runs into the idea of, well, I already have a belief. Hmm. But saying, you know what, you have a belief and it's great, and guess what? What you already believe is completely compatible, not only with agreeing with the science, but agreeing that this is a serious issue that we need to fix. And when you take that approach, it's completely different. What about among your scientific colleagues, those mm -hmm. who don't necessarily have any religious faith whatsoever, um, but, they, but they believe in facts, they believe in evidence, they mm -hmm. believe in science? Yeah. Do they tend to either pigeonhole or marginalize your contribution to this because you do want to take the religious angle into account? Mm -hmm. I was worried about that mm -hmm. when I first started telling people that I was a Christian. Because as a scientist, you don't really talk about what pew you sit in on a Sunday if you do it all. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I ever decided to tell people was because I realized that the group I was part of, especially in the United States, but even still a little bit here in Canada, was much more likely to say science wasn't real or climate change wasn't real. So I felt like I had to stand out and say, hey, it is real, and I'm one of you, and this is why it's real. So I was worried that my colleagues would you know, feel like I had checked my brain at the door. And I have to say, I've been completely humbled by their response. Because they've been open to it? Completely. I have had colleagues come up to me and say, we studied your book in our Sunday school class. Hmm. Or I've had colleagues come up to me and say, I don't share your faith, but I respect what you're doing, and I support it. My colleagues have been incredible. But on the other hand, I have to say about half of the really nasty stuff I get on social media, email, in the mail, about half of that comes from Christians. It does? Yes. Christians are criticizing you even though you are one of them. What yes. Are they, and they're criticizing you for, because you do have, this is not the right word, but you do have <laughs> faith in science. Well, here's the thing with science, right? Whether you believe in gravity or not, it exists. It, it exists, exactly. <laughs> right. yeah. So in that sense, our attitudes towards science don't really matter. It still works. Whether we believe that climate is changing or not, it's changing, and we're going to bear the consequences of it. Mm. Um, I think what people have been told, though, is that you can't be who you are and agree that climate change is real. Mm. So the message you hear in the United States, and even a little bit in Canada now today, because of all of the media crossing over, we hear a message that you can't be conservative, you can't be Christian, you can't care about the economy, you can't be concerned about the welfare of poor countries who need energy to develop, and think that climate change is a real and serious issue. You can't be who you are. So and I believe it's exactly the opposite. I was just going to say, you're exhibit number one for the fact that that just ain't, that ain't the case. It isn't. So, in our last minute here, you clearly still have a lot of work to do in order to get people on side. Yes. So what's the plan? The plan is to keep telling people that we can be exactly who we are with the values we already have in our hearts. And I believe that nearly every single human already has all the values they need to care about climate change. We just have to connect the dots. So you intend to keep doing so. Excellent. Catherine Hayhoe, it's so good to see you again. We actually met before, sort of. We did. Yeah, virtually. You were online from Texas and we were here, but it's so nice to see you in person this time. Thanks much so better much. to be here. Thank I you. Agree. Catherine Hayhoe. Putting faith in climate science from Texas Tech University. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.